Mm -hmm. Okay, chat. So this will be tier list for a uh, patch 14.20. We have now played a few days of the patch, so I feel a bit more confident in being able to say what champions are really good and what champions we feel like are not that good and what champions are pretty bad. Overall, though, I do have to say that this patch is pretty, pretty good for ADCs, to be honest. I think last patch, ADCs were pretty weak. Um, mages were on top and... In general, the agency on ADCs fell pretty low and the damage fell pretty low and your first item spikes were kind of underwhelming. But that changed a lot this patch. So the big highlights of this patch that I, I went through before, but we can talk about them a bit. So you guys just have some context for the changes in, in the patch. Um, there were a few champion buffs. There was Caitlyn, Aphelios, and Nyla and Tristana. The Nyla buff was uh, big, so she ended up getting hotfix nerfed, so now she's kind of weaker than she was pre-buff. Uh, the Aphelios buff was pretty small, the Caitlyn buff was pretty small, and Jin got a small nerf. But the biggest change to ADCs here was they made Essence Material cost 2,900 gold, but give 5 AD, 5 less haste. Made Collector cost 450 less gold, but give 10 less AD. And made Static Ship give 5% less attack speed. Made Yuntal 250 less gold, and give 5 less AD and 10 less damage on the passive. What that ended up doing is that you now have much better first items that are actually competitive with other classes in the game. And you end up having a much easier time snowballing and having much more impact in your games. Let's start with... Uh, let's just go through it in the order that I ended up placing them here in, and then we'll... We'll, we'll go from there. So let's start with Samira. I also want to, every champ I go over, I want to talk a little bit about their build and what I think they should go and what I think it should look like. Samira, I think Conquer, Hubris into Collector, i.e. LDR, Shield Bow, something like that, should be best. Uh, but I would put her probably in B tier. I don't think she's that good. Uh, it's still quite a bit of CC in the meta. She struggles a bit in laning phase and she's a bit of a cheesy champ. If you do get ahead, you can definitely win games. But overall, there are other champions that can abuse this lethality hubris build better than her. Uh, that I would... Oops, I clicked the random button. That would uh, that I would rather play, to be honest. So I feel like B tier for her. Then we have Nyla. So I'm actually not fully sure where Nyla is. She was like, win rate wise, after the patch, she was C tier. She was insane, right? She was just absolutely bonkers high win rate she still has i think a really high win rate it's now 54 percent before it was at 57 percent but i'm not fully sure it's still a champion that barely anybody plays and it's pretty much only one tricks playing it so i'm inclined to put her somewhere around a tier when i played her out myself for me she feels like a very clunky weird champion that i don't enjoy playing that much to be honest i think her best build is collector rush into ie into shield bow and then ldr something like that uh you could also go like uh, a non crit lethality item first but she's she benefits really hard off of crit so i think going a crit item first is good as well i think you can do the same build on samira as well i think you either go like on samira on most of the champions that are going to be going lethality you have an option of either going collector first or going hubris slash humus first into collector it's just a bit of a question about like if you go hubris it's more about snowballing if you go humus it has a bit better build path you can just go long swords right but everything is viable everything's viable and then we have senna i think senna adc is actually not that bad i think she's not that bad when i played her grass and tanky build uh, that was last patch though, but I don't see why that would have gotten so much weaker. I don't think it's that bad, but I don't think it's that good either. I don't think it's D tier, but I don't think it's B tier either. I think it's C tier. I think it's C tier. I think it's pretty mid. Um, the build that I tried was Bork into Hurricane, into Black Cleaver, something like that, and then Titanic. And you go like Grasp and full tank, but Grasp got nerfed for ranged. Um, so it's a bit worse. You could also try going her full lethality, but they kind of tried to nerf her for that and make her more of a supportive champ. That's all about healing. They kind of don't want her to be an ADC, so not the best of champs. Then we have Zeri. Zeri for me is a bit of a tough one. I think she's in between B and C. I think she's pretty weak. You have kind of two builds on her, I think. Either you can go a bit crazy going collector first, going for full one shot, or you can just go static first still. You could even go Bork, I guess, but I don't know. You could also Strive Breaker. I mean, there's some weird things you could try to cook to try to make her feel a bit better, but most people go static and with the static build and Zeri in general, I just don't think she's that good. This is kind of, it's weird because I feel like Riot was trying to make this kind of durability patch 2.0 but to be honest the game feels like whoever kills each other faster wins it doesn't feel like a dps meta it feels like a burst meta all the mages deal so much damage all the lethality champs deal so much damage so a champ like zeri that wants to do damage slowly and buy normal standard crit items just doesn't really fit that well in i think then we have twitch i think twitch should be a tier can abuse lethality items pretty well i think you can go like either you can go still bork first um into like hurricane ie or i think you can go collector first and that should be pretty decent as well and you play kind of this one shot assassin type of style i think twitch has always been okay with that it's not like his preferred choice but he's always going to be high in my solo queue tier list usually just because of how good his cheese potential is his cheese potential <laughs> uh just you know you as long as he can stealth and kill your mid laner even when you ping 
he's gonna be a good champion, to be honest. And then we have MF. MF, I think S tier. I think she's so f strong with uh, Hubris, Rush, and full lethality. She just does so much damage. It feels like, for me, it's the only champion right now where I can go 0 3, 0 2, 0 4, and still feel like I can carry the game. On every other champion, if I fall slightly behind, I think the game is lost. I just think the game is auto lost. Because my team is not good enough to understand how to like carry fights, any of one of them individually. So if I can't make that difference, we're going to lose the game. But when I play a math, even if I don't have the greatest start, and I just have an okay start or a bit of a weaker start, I still feel like I can have crazy, crazy potential to carry games. And it's just the damage from this champ is crazy. The build that I've been going that I like the most is Hubris into Collector, into LDR, into IE. I feel like that's really fucking nice. I think you can also just go full Lethality. So you just go Hubris, Humus, Edge of Night, BT, something like that, you know, where you just don't go any crit. I think that's fine too. But she does have really nice crit scaling so i do think make like transitioning into crit makes sense and i also really like dark harvest but i think pta is also good pta is good but dark harvest is so juicy and you proc it with the e you proc it with the ult and it's just you get double stacks with hub hubris and you like kind of fun stacking both and it's like very satisfying and then yasuo so yasuo got buffed this patch i think a tier i think he wasn't particularly bad in bot lane and he's just always been a good pick in bot lane but very few people want to play him in bot lane which is weird i don't understand why so many people play yasuo mid lane but so few people play in bot lane when I think he's just strictly better bot lane, pretty much. If I was a Yasuo man, I would play him bot lane every game. Because I'm pretty sure, like, he's good into 90% of the things that people play in bot lane. The only things that I think he's bad into bot lane is, like, maybe Nyla and some mages. But even those he's fine against. I think he's really good into most bot laners. Then we got Brand. Um... Uh... I think he's one of the weaker mages. Salt mages are not that good. It's mostly all about burst, I feel like. And he got nerfed quite a few times for jungle. So I'd say B tier. I'd say B tier. Yeah, I'd say B tier. I don't think it's anything crazy on both. Then we have Varus. I think B tier as well. Pretty decent with both lethality and on hit, but nothing special. He's a good lane bully, and if you're good at playing him, you can definitely get a good advantage from lane. But I don't think he's crazy strong or anything really insane. Uh, I think with you go like on hit, you should go first item Bork into Rage Blade into situational items, maybe like Terminus or Hurricane or defensive items. And if you go Lethality, then either Hubris first or Yumus first. I think Hubris first should actually be really good because he benefits a lot of the CDR and you should be able to stack it up from safety. I think Kalista. Mm, she's in between A and B tier for me. She did get quite a bit better with Lethal Tempo coming back, but I don't think she's insane. But I think she's not bad. But she does have a very high skill ceiling and she requires a lot of games to make work. I think I'm going to put her high B tier for now. I feel like most people that are watching this are not going to be able to make Callista work. You need to put a, be willing to put in a lot of games, a lot of effort to learn her and get really good at her, understand her limits. If you're able to do that, I think you can push her up to A tier. If not, B tier. Then we have Esrel. Esrel for me, B tier as well. I think Callista's maybe a bit... Uh, I'd say they're pretty similar strength. Ah, maybe even A tier for Esrel actually. I think Esrel's quite good. Esrel's quite good. He still has a lot of good matchups doesn't really abuse like lethality items at all but his items are still fine he just has pretty good snowballing but it's kind of a weird how you play astral now for me is you play him kind of a lane bully and you try to snowball and if you don't snowball i think you're kind of useless but if you do snowball you can easily take over games but it's weird how his identity has shifted i feel like before he was very much a scaling pick where you really wanted to get the two three items and then you were gonna start carrying well now i feel like it's kind of your strong level one and you want to abuse that strength to carry the game and if you don't, you're not going to be that good in the game. Then we have Aphelios. Aphelios is C or B tier. I think B tier. I think B tier, honestly. Aphelios is not that bad. Aphelios buffs were decent. I think he's better than Samira. I think he's better than Samira. But worse than Varus Callisto. He's not that bad. He's not that good either, though. I've tried to make Aphelios work. And to be honest, it just feels like playing League on hard mode. I just don't think he's that good. He still lacks mobility compared to most ADCs. He's his laning phase. Hard to get consistent leads in laning phase, even if you're better than the opponent because you just don't have the base stats to really get a good lead, I feel like, in laning phase compared to a lot, a lot of other champs has. For me, he's he's uh, he's B tier. That's Smolder. Now, Smolder's between B and C. See, I'm pretty sure Smolder's the lowest win rate on both lane. Yeah, alongside Corky. I mean, he's actually close to Aphelios in win rate. But Aphelios is always a bit worse win rate than his actual stats are, okay? Now, I think Smolder, I might have to put him in C. I think C, to be honest. He's not that bad. He's not aggressively bad. He just has kind of a bad laning phase, kind of a bad mid game, and then a pretty good late game <laughs> so if you're willing to make that sacrifice for those things then you know he's okay but most people are not going to be willing to make that sacrifice they don't want to struggle through the, a tough early game and a tough mid game just to get to a decent ish late game like he does have one of the best late games if you are fed and you get your stacks but if you don't if you're not that fed and you don't have that many stacks his late game is only okay i'd say it's not that crazy the thing that makes his late game really obnoxious is if you have a lot of damage and you're tanky if you have those two things, he's crazy late game. But if you can't get those those things and you just have damage or you're just tanky, you're kind of like, whatever. Seraphine, 
pretty solid mage. Mm, top of B tier. Ah, top of B tier. Pretty solid mage. Tristana, I think A tier. Honestly, I think Tristana is quite, 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 quite good. I think it should look maybe something like this. Something like this. Maybe something like this, to be honest. Maybe something like this, honestly. Best top and eight here. I think it's quite good. I really think, like, people are still struggling a bit figuring her out. What I found with her build is that Collector first into Navori seems to be the best, rather than Essence River, which is really weird. I don't know why. Collect why is How is Essence River always such an underwhelming item? That even on a champion that does run Oom, you do run Oom when you go Collector. Does Collector still have a sizable, better win rate than Essence River does? And they're completed at the same time, so it's not about snowballing right that's just weird but when i played collector it felt better you do more damage you have more kill threat with the e it is what it is you know but uh with collector into novori into ie and then ldr you do do a lot of damage and you have a lot of kill threat early game if you can jump in you have a good matchup um so i i like her a lot i think she's really good Sibber, really bad getting buffed next patch will probably be op next patch the, the the buffs that she's getting are really big i don't think she's quite c tier to be honest though i think she's somewhere along here in b tier low b tier i think the c tier champs are all worse Caitlyn, really good Really good. The buff she got was really good. Her Q now one-shots casters once she gets enough AD and maxed it out. And uh, the new build, being able to go Collector on her and going Hubris on her. Like, you go Hubris into Collector into LDR IE and you're pumping the damage. You're pumping the damage. To be honest, if you go that build on any ADC that has own, that does mostly physical damage, you're going to have a good time. Honestly, you're going to have a good time. Way, in my opinion, the best mage on bot lane. Uh, top of A tier, really good. Uh, just has really good wave player, really good fighting ability, really good CC, really good utility, really good AoE, good DPS, everything kind of. He provides everything. Vayne, still pretty damn bad. B e tier or C tier, that's the question. I think right alongside Sivir. Vayne fits right alongside Sivir. Just, she needs to have better wave player. I bring this up every time I talk about Vayne. She has terrible range, terrible wave player. He fits better in top lane, and she is better in top lane. Unfortunately, I think if Riot finds a way to buff her wave clear, she could be viable in bot lane and a good bot lane champion. But as she is right now, she's probably never going to be better than B tier or C tier unless they give her some big, big buffs or big, big changes, in my opinion. Lucian, mm, with Lucian Nami and Lucian Milio, I'd say he's like A tier. Without it, I'd say low B tier alongside Vayne and Sivir, to be honest. I'd say alongside Vayne and Sivir. Draven, mm, top of B tier. Kind of mid, honestly. Kind of mid. I mean, he's not hes not that bad. I'm a bit biased because I've been losing a lot on Draven because I just get the worst teams ever when I pick him. Uh, even when I stomp lane. And usually I feel like when I stomp lane on Draven, the game is free win. But my teams have just been refusing to win whenever I play Draven. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it is. It just feels so fucking hard to win whenever I beat Draven. Maybe you can argue he's A tier. Maybe you can argue he's A tier. He's good with the Lethality build. I think Hubris first is a good item for him for sure but it's nothing that insane and it feels like you have to play a bit he's a bit for me like a bit like a feelers that you have to play better than you have a lot of these other champions to find the same success Tarfus, pretty good mage but not that insane we put him in b tier Seeks, b tier as well all these mages for me are kind of the same they're decent wave clear bots i mean card has more early game pressure but i think he's not insane as a champion right now zaya b tier very situational. We're filling up this B tier, to be honest. Very situational champ. Uh, if the situations are right for her, she's very good. I want her, like, here, I think. Yeah, here. Uh, if the situations for her are very good, if enemy team is all coming into you, all having, like, dive champs, like Silas, Akali, Aatrox, Viego, Darius, Irelia, Hecarim, Katarina, you know, these kind of, like, assassin dive-in champs, then Saya is great. If they have stuff like Quay, stuff like Velkos, like Esrol, Azir, these long-range champions, then Saya's game can be very, very difficult. Then we have Koma. Maybe he's S tier, to be honest. I think he's really good. I just don't like playing him that much, so I haven't been playing him that much. Uh, but I do think he's really good. I'm not sure if S tier or A tier. I'm not fully sure. I'm not fully sure. What's his win rate? It's 53.5. Looks pretty high, but uh, people people don't want to play him much. I think top for me, I feel like MF is stronger. I feel like MF is stronger. Like the damage that MF does, it just feels a bit unreasonable. But curious to hear what you guys think. Maybe you guys disagree with me on this one. But I think Koma top of A tier. Top of A tier. Then we have Ash. I think Ash as well comes in around here. Very strong as well. Just always gonna be strong, I feel like. Uh just has a great kit for solo queue, has great laning phase, uh, fine scaling, good DPS. Sets up her team nicely with her ulti and stuff. And just due to her laning phase is why she's here, pretty much. I think you still just go kind of like an on-hit build. Maybe you go, like, I think you go Static first into HD, maybe, or Kraken, or Bork. I guess her items have taken a hit, but she still is kind of obnoxious when I play against her. I don't see her that much. Maybe we'll move her but down a bit. Down a bit in A tier. Down a bit like this, maybe. I think that's fair, yeah. Moving her down a bit in A. And then we have Yinx. Jinx is pretty damn good as well. Inclined to put her around here. 
around here. I think she's not quite S tier for me. I feel like MF is stronger. I think with Jinx, you just go Collector into IE into uh, Hurricane or LDR, and then you buy the other dwarf. Uh, or you go Opportunity, or you go Humus or Hubris first into Collector, uh, into LDR, into IE. Both of those are fine. Just depends a bit how much lethality you want to go. It's kind of weird that every single ADC is going lethality. The meta is a bit strange, to be honest. I'm not going to lie to you. The meta is a bit strange. But that's the meta, and the champion still is quite alright. I think both PTA and Lethal Tempo are good on her. You can get away with. I think Lethal Tempo, if they're tankier, is good. And if they're not that tanky, then PTA is good. It's kind of my thought process, at least. Then we have Kai'Sa. I think Kai'Sa is S-tier alongside our map. I think they're both mega strong champs. Uh, Kai'Sa, you can buy, you can play her either with PTA, Lethal Tempo, or Halo Blades. Halo Blades, if they're mega squishy. PTA, if they're somewhere in the middle. Lethal Tempo, if they're very tanky, I think. Uh, and I've been enjoying the Mana Mune Halo Blades build quite a bit in games where I feel like I can poke a lot. As that's Check Mana Mune, Luden Psycho, Voids, and then Rabidon. And uh, I've also been Mani enjoying the static... And I've been enjoying the static Rageblade Nasher's Tooth build quite a bit. I've been playing with Void Staff rather than Crypt Bloom, and you can still get two Ws. I think it's fine. But you can also go Crypt Bloom, of course. But Void Staff, it's 95 AP now, so it's pretty damn good. And then we have Jin. I think Jin is here in A tier. A lot of champions in A tier, a lot of champions in B tier. Uh, I think Jin, even though he got nerfed, all his items got buffed, right? Or not all his items, but Collector got buffed, and he loves Collector. So for me, you play Jin, you go Hubris, you go Collector, you go LDR, you go IE, Dark Harvest in runes, and you're popping. You're fucking popping. You're doing so much damage. Syndra, true. We should add Syndra as an AP carry here. She's maybe S tier, to be honest. She's so fucking broken. She's the best AP carry in both. I forgot. I said Huey, but Syndra's the best, I think. This is Syndra, but is she top of A or S tier? I think S tier. She's so broken. I think this is good, chat. I think overall, you can see, if we compare it to the last tier list, that all ADCs moved up. I think there's a lot of decent ADCs right now. It's hard to play ADC right now and pick a champion that's really bad. Most of the champions I feel like are quite decent, which is a good state for ADC to be in, but the meta is weird because standard crit itemization is very strange. I think they kind of f***ed up post mythics with how they've taken the direction of items. I don't like that everybody and their mother is buying lethality. I don't think that's the correct direction for the game. Uh, I hope they change it and ADC is still decent, you know, but I think probably what's going to happen is a lot of our items are going to get nerfed and a lot of lethality items are going to get nerfed and you'll see a lot of these champions moving down uh, and then they'll be buffed back up in some other way. That's my prediction, at least of what's going to happen. But right now, it's a good patch to play ADC. It's a good patch to climb on. I think Kai'Sa MF for me are the biggest elo picks and then if you are an AP uh, bot abuser, Syndra by for sure. And then I think really these five champions are all really solid. And then after you go after Tristana, I think these are more niche champs. Uh, as you go down the list and you need more experience playing these champions and it'll be a bit more situational in how good they are. But yeah, I think it's not a bad patch for ADC and uh, I wish you guys the best of luck.